and good morning world it is 8 25 in the morning on thursday the 8th of november 2018 singapore time it's 25 minutes past midnight in the uk on the 8th of november and it's 25 minutes past seven in the evening on new york on the 7th of november I'm in Singapore doing lots and lots and lots of readings, absolutely rammed out yesterday, the day before and today. I do have a couple of slots free for Friday and Sunday. I've still got about six spare slots, so if there's anyone in Singapore who wants a reading, you know how to get hold of me, steve at stevejudd.com. Big thank you to the people at Body Talk Singapore, www.bodytalksystems.com. These are the people who are hosting me, they're really great. And as you can see, I've got my friend with me who's, who wants to say hello, so hi. Um, right, so where do we begin? Um, I just want to say a big thank you to everyone out there. I've been doing videos on YouTube now for seven and one third years. It is exactly one Saturn cycle, one Saturn quarter since I started doing YouTube videos and literally today is my seven is one quarter of a saturn cycle and today i'm going to hit thirty thousand subscribers so a big thank you to everyone who's watching right enough enough um ego boosting let's do some proper astrology the events of the last few days america's been taking the world spotlight and a lot of things have crept in under the radar in other countries without really being reported Today is actually a really significant day. Jupiter will in conjunct Uranus precisely in about six to eight hours time. Later today, in about 13, 14 hours time, Jupiter will leave Scorpio and move into Sagittarius. And then in about 20 hours time, the moon will leave Scorpio and move into Sagittarius. And by this time tomorrow, we're gonna to be looking at a triple conjunction of Mercury, Moon and Jupiter, all in early Sagittarius. That's going to be a very, very different energy to where we are today. We are heading into a Mercury retrograde. Mercury retrograde in the first 13, 14 degrees of Sagittarius. Now on the surface that doesn't seem too bad, but when you look slightly deeper it's actually going to be quite a challenging one. When Mercury stands still, and it's starting to stand still now, we're well into Mercury retrograde shadow. When Mercury stands still in nine days time, it will be standing still at 13 and a half degrees of Sagittarius. This will be squaring Neptune. And Mercury will be squaring Neptune for about nine or 10 days as it stands still and starts going retrograde. And a Mercury in Sagittarius square Neptune and Pisces is not a particularly nice aspect. It, um, Mercury doesn't really like being in Sagittarius because Sagittarius deals with the bigger picture, the overview, the large scale side of things, the philosophy more than the details, whereas Mercury is very much a details and a logical planet. So Mercury in Sagittarius tends to either really overstretch, over egg, over, over expand on its words, or the opposite, to undercut and undermine. Now, um, with Mercury square Neptune, this gives a kind of brain fog. It's the potential for confusion. People with Mercury square Neptune in their charts are not the world's best statisticians or logisticians. They're the people who work much more on mental intuition rather than logic. Translate this into the world and it's going to be a time uh, during the middle of November, say a week, a few days time for two weeks, where we're not going to be getting the accuracy that we no allegedly normally get from our news media. There's going to be a sense of um, obscuring of, of fog and clouds and mist and treacle and quicksand. And then when Mercury really gets going into its retrograde phase, it comes back and it conjuncts Jupiter in early Sagittarius. Mercury conjunct Jupiter on the surface sounds fun and to be honest people with Mercury conjunct Jupiter in their charts they are fun. These are the people who have got a good sense of humour, they tend to uh, laugh a lot, their glasses are normally full and Mercury conjunct Jupiter people whilst they're not the most subtle, tactful or diplomatic on the block they are normally some of the most honest, cheerful and bouncy. But when Mercury is retrograde 
in Sagittarius conjunct Jupiter, which after all is ruled by Jupiter, that is the case for certain communication systems to get wildly out of control. When Mercury stops going retrograde, it will have moved back into the end of Scorpio and um, it will stand still for a week and this is going to take place at the beginning of December and then it will move forward again. The Mercury retrograde shadow doesn't clear until about the solstice. So the period from now through to December the 21st, um, I suggest we collectively suspend judgment on any major changes that are happening either personally or globally because it's not going to work the way we expect. It's not going to, the outcome isn't going to be the way we anticipate at the moment. There is little sign of clarity on the horizon until the end of the year. Once Mercury has finished its Mercury retrograde shadow period and cleared the square to Neptune, which won't be till about the 23rd, 24th of December, then we'll be able to sort of look forward into the future and make realistic assessments, plans, guesses with a degree of confidence. With Mercury retrograde conjunct Neptune and then, uh, square Neptune and then conjunct Jupiter, I'm not that, um, enthusiastic about some of the communications that's going to come out of various people's uh, lips over the coming three or four weeks. There is already an energy of what I would describe as bombasticness about some of the pronouncements coming out in the world. There is a, an antagonism between peoples and I suspect this is only going to get worse in the short term. There is an element of vitriol bombasticness, arrogance and condescendence, all big words, coming out uh, in, at various levels of, of government, economics and even at the personal level. Take away Mercury, Neptune and Jupiter. Saturn is now clearing, it's, it's moving to the point where it's going to clear its own retrograde shadow and by the time we're into mid late December Saturn is going to be entering new territory and one of the things I'm seeing in a lot of readings over the last couple of days is that a lot of people now are reaching the point where they're at their wits end with the sense of blockage restriction frustration and circumstances outside of their control that are holding them back and that have been holding them back since March April of this year this is a classic Saturn tactic and now that Saturn is moving forward there does seem to be resolution coming to a lot of personal issues in people's lives in a way that most people would rather didn't happen but that's what Saturn does he, he creates situations into black and white yes and no and Saturn of course is chronos chronometer the old father time think of him with a with a, a cow and a scythe you know that's old Saturn for you and of course, in time, Jupiter will move out of Sagittarius. Jupiter will move into Capricorn in a year from now, 12 and a half months from now, to join Saturn and Pluto. And that's a subject for a whole different set of videos. I've done one about three months ago, and I will do a lot more. And I will do a video in the next couple of days on specifically on Jupiter moving into Sagittarius. But we're all going to get a taste of this in the next 24 hours. Jupiter's going to move into Sagittarius. The Moon's going to move into Sagittarius. Mercury's already in Sagittarius. Venus is getting ready to stop going retrograde in the next few days and start moving back forward again. Saturn is now beginning to clear its retrograde period. Neptune is almost ready to stop going retrograde and start moving forward again. We're at a time of change and I actually suspect that these cha this, the change that we're seeing here is as it's always darkest just before dawn. And the period from now through to perhaps the solstice is a time of maximum confusion, obscurity, of, of, uh, of denial and of facts being deliberately mm, misrepresented. But I also suggest that by the time we're into the end of the year, there is going to be a sense of clarity beginning to dawn. And the more we get into the new year, and especially in the first six to eight weeks of next year, 
then we're looking at a kind of clarity and resolution to issues that we haven't seen for about three or four years. I find it fascinating that I think it's either the first or the second of January, at the very start of the year, Mars moves into Aries. What a wonderful transit that's going to be. So for any astrologers out there who are watching this and who, who uh, have a look at your charts and have a look at your clients' charts and look at where zero degrees of Aries is because the new year represents an absolutely brilliant time for a fresh start, a new beginning and initiation. By that time, Saturn will be firmly established into the middle of Capricorn. Jupiter will be approaching mid-Sagittarius. It's going to be a whole different energy by then. I can't wait for it, to be honest, because at the moment, it's messy. And the events of recent days have not been that dignified. It does seem as if both the best and the worst of humanity is coming out at this time. So, without wishing to sound pious, I think that I, as an astrologer, and other astrologers who I know, we have a kind of obligation to try and be as... Uh, detached, impersonal, objective and neutral as we can, despite our own personal leanings, and try and represent a kind of more independent feedback into the world at this time. So if you are studying astrology, and more and more people are, then don't be scared to talk about it. I used to be really scared about boosting myself as an astrologer, and now it's like, yeah, this is what I do. The world needs astrologers. Okay, I'm ranting and rambling, so I'm going to get off. I'm going to post this, and then tomorrow I'm going to do a proper video on Jupiter into Sagittarius. Watch this space. Have a great day, world. Catch you later. Bye.